if a man and a woman came to you and said, I want to lose weight, mm -hmm. they said, I'm 200 pounds um, and I'd like to lose some weight. Would you give them different advice on what to do? Absolutely. Absolutely would. And it comes down to a lot of, uh, we see this on social media all the time, calories in, calories out, right? So when we're looking at calories in, calories out, that idea of that algorithm can work well in men. And the reason for that is the hypothalamus. So if we're looking at the hypothalamus, which is an area in the brain that controls appetite, it also controls our endocrine system. So for men, they don't have as many of what we call our kisspeptin neurons activated. So this is uh, neurons that are responsible for when we have nutrients coming in. They fire, they're like, yeah, okay, we got enough nutrition coming in that we can now accommodate for developing muscle and losing body fat. For women, we have more areas that are very sensitive. Sensitive to? To nutrient density. So when I say this, when we're talking about uh, four grams of carbohydrate that come in and say they're carbohydrate from fruit and veg, not from ultra processed stuff. Those four grams of carb will affect the bodies differently between being a man and a woman. For a man, those four grams of carb coming in primarily will go blood sugar and then be stored as liver or muscle glycogen. For women, it's blood sugar. It doesn't get stored because for women, in order to store muscle um, and liver glycogen, you have to have an activation of uh, some enzymes from the liver as well as some enzymes within the skeletal muscle itself to say, yeah, okay, we want to store this. We don't want to circulate it. So then we start looking at how the brain is perceiving that. So if the brain is saying, yeah, we can store this because there's still enough muscle tissue around, there's still enough blood glucose that we can keep going and we can survive the day. But for women... It sits there, the blood glucose sits there, and when it starts being used, the hypothalamus is like, okay, where's the extra food that's coming in so we can keep going and countering the stress that's coming in? And the best way from a numbers perspective to look at it is when we are looking at calorie baseline calorie intake just to exist and not get into any kind of endocrine or hormone dysfunction and appetite dysfunction, for men it's 15 calories per kilogram of fat-free mass. For women, it's 30. So we start to see men do really well on things like fasted training. We see men do really well on calorie restriction because the hypothalamus is not as sensitive to lower calorie intake or to low carb intake or to high protein and um, high fat intake. But for women, because the hypothalamus has more areas that are sensitive to nutrient density. What does that mean? Sorry, I'm not even sure what the hypothalamus is. So the hypothalamus is an area in the brain. Yeah. And it's sensing. So you have blood that circulates through the brain. It senses temperature, how hot your your oh, blood okay. is. Like the right? thermostat or something of the body. Yeah. Okay. So it's, yeah, it is a thermostat. It's the appetite control center. It's how your body responds to salt, how your body responds to protein, carbohydrate. Do I need more? Do I need less? So it's it's like the control center for the most part. So for women who come in and they're doing fasted training, the hypothalamus is like, wait a second, we don't have any blood sugar. We don't have enough carbohydrate to actually do this kind of training. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a little bit of a dysfunction here, and I'm going to start downturning all the other systems that need the same kind of fuel because I don't have enough just to do these muscle contractions. So that means you could end up losing muscle. Absolutely. Absolutely. So if a woman comes to me and it's like, I want to lose weight and I've been doing fasted training, I get up, I have a black coffee, I go to the gym, I do my lifting, I do some of my cardio. So my girlfriend does exactly that. And then I'm not that hungry because I did a hard workout at the gym. I might have a protein recovery shake and then I'll hold off eating my first meal until noon. I always turn to them and go, well, why did you go to the gym? Because all you've effectively done is burn through your lean mass. So your body needs to have some fuel. And the first thing that goes is lean mass because it's a very active component of the body. So it would be better for you as a woman to have maybe 15 grams of protein if you're going to do strength or 15 grams of protein with 30 grams of carb, which isn't a lot, before you go do cardio and strength. Because this is just enough to raise your blood sugar 
to circulate to the hypothalamus that, yes, there's some nutrition coming in. I'm able to get that blood sugar working. I'm able to get that blood sugar into the muscle. I'm able to stimulate the mitochondria in the muscle to actually use some more free fatty acids. I'm able to tell the liver that I can actually get through this and use these free fatty acids instead of storing them. It only takes a little bit of food to then have benefit for what you're doing. For a man, if he's like, comes in, I have a black coffee, I go to the gym, I do my strength, I might do a little cardio, have my protein afterwards, and then I might delay my meal. I'm like, that's all right. Because you have a longer window for recovery. The hypothalamus isn't as sensitive. You're not burning through lean mass. You're developing a stress on the body. And we know that it's really good that you had that protein post-exercise because that's going to create some muscle protein synthesis and hold you over till you have your meal. Okay, so I'm going to try and explain this to you um, like I'm a 10-year-old, yeah. which is the exact level of IQ Perfect. I have on this subject matter. Yeah. So you've got this hypothalamus in the brain, mm-hmm. which is basically this sensor. It's trying to figure out, make sure everything is in... I'm trying to think of that big word that someone taught me. Homeostasis. Homeostasis. Everything is level, right? Yeah. And a woman's hypothalamus is more sensitive. So if my partner wakes up, goes to the gym has her black coffee, goes to the gym, does a big workout as she always does, her body, her hypothalamus is going to panic a little bit more Mm -hmm. because it's going to assume that there's stress on the body now and it's going to look around to see if it has sufficient blood glucose levels and it's, and it's not going to, because she's not had anything for a while, she's not going to have the sufficient blood glucose levels, so it's going to start burning her lean muscle mass. Exactly. Which means that she's she's essentially going to, it's like one step forward, one step back. Right, super simplified. For a guy, has his black coffee in the morning, goes to the gym, does the workout, the body looks, and because the hypothalamus is less sensitive, it's less requiring of there to be higher blood sugar levels, doesn't care as much. So it's going to... It can also tap more into our liver and muscle glycogen stores. Okay, so, so it's going to say, okay. yeah, okay, well, we have a little bit of blood glucose. We need a little bit more. So let's tap into the stores and pull them out. So it's less reluctant to go straight for my lean muscle mass. Exactly. Okay. So it has an fine. alternative fuel source. Hmm, that's interesting. And what's the evolutionary story of this? Why, why does this make sense? When we look tribally, like there, and I might get hit by some sociologists who are like, wait, this isn't completely true. But for the exception, there are some tribes that didn't fit into this. But for the general idea from a biological evolutionary standpoint, when we had times of low calorie intake, so we had to go find the beast or we had to go out and find calories, it was at a disadvantage for the woman to be pregnant or to have a baby, an extra mouth to feed. So in times of low food intake, the reproductive system or the endocrine system of a woman would wind down. So she would become amenorrheic or lose her menstrual cycle for a while. But it didn't affect men in that same way because they had to lean up and get fitter and faster because they had to go fight the beast or they had to go find the calories and bring it back. So when we're looking from that evolutionary standpoint, in times of low calorie intake or low food intake, a woman's body will start to conserve and wind down because it thinks that there's a famine coming. But for men, they're not as sensitive and the body's like, oh, not a lot of calories coming in. That must mean there's a fight that I have to prepare for. So I'm going to lean up. I'm going to address all of my fuel systems so that I can tap into all these alternative fuel systems so that I will have the energy to be able to go and fight the beast to bring the calories back. Mm -hmm. So when there's adequate calories available, we see that women will lean up. They'll become uh, more acutely aware. Cognitive function comes up. Carbohydrates are really important. So we see that there is a development of egg maturation. We have better endocrine pulse. So that means that our hormones that pulse on a daily basis, they actually have the full pulse um, and return to baseline to encourage the body to have a really robust endocrine system. So that's thyroid, that's our menstrual cycle, it's all of the things. But when we start pulling the calories back, all that stuff winds down. 